Hey guys, it's TTL back with another video for you. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 650 watt Superflower Leadex Gold 2 because this is the second generation. They've made a few little uh, changes underneath the hood as well as um, uh, with warranty as well. That's a massive one that's now gone up from uh, five years to uh, seven years. So We've got the 650 watt one, and I went for the lowest end one because that's the one that uh, you guys seem to be buying the most of, but you can get them in 750 watt, 800 watt, 1000 watt, and 1200 watt. So it's to suit all ranges and uh, all power ranges, rather. Power ranges, go, go, power ranges. Yeah. I'm funny. Uh, and uh, budgets, obviously, as well. It does come with this random extra bag, which will fit the power supply in, but I'm assuming it's going to be for cables as well. But you can obviously have the cables in here. So and I'm not quite sure why you get the second bag, unless you're planning on taking your um, power supply separately on holiday with you or something. Anyway, so when we get inside the box, inside the box, inside the packaging. Um, they're all black cables, partially braided. I say partially braided because you do get some fairly big ends that come off the ends. I did wish that they'd done um, these kind of a bit short, you know, longer on the ends when I reviewed these the first times, to be fair, because these plugs do sit right side by side each other. And I reckon you probably could have got away with, um, you know, tidying it up a little bit. The only thing that really changes with them this time, you get um, uh, six SATAs rather than 10, and you don't get uh, a second eight pin CPU power. You get a four plus four, which I'm just trying to find for you now, but it's kind of difficult. There we go, we've got a four plus four, but you don't get a dedicated eight pin now, so you don't get a secondary one. So anyone that might have been thinking about that, that's with the 650 watt, you'll get more cables with the higher end ones. But you do get uh, four individual 6 plus 2 PCI Express connectors. So your PCI Express connectors are all individual. Now these um, blocks, they're clear because as I'll show you in a minute, the power supply does light up, which does make it kind of nice. So when we get the power supply out itself, essentially what they've done is they, they have made the, the new version smaller. The old version used to measure 200 millimetres or 20 centimetres long. So it would have been another 35 centimetres longer. This one is only 165 millimetres. So if, you, if you've um, got a smaller case or you know need a little bit of extra room, because that extra 35 millimetres can make a massive difference with cable tidying and stuff. It's basically like the amount of uh, space that you're going to get with the, the cables once they're folded round. So to have all of that extra room in the bottom of a case, if you are short on space, it's gonna make a massive difference. The other thing that they've done is they now have a 135 millimeter fan rather than a 140 millimeter fan. Uh, and they are saying it's a lot more efficient. So that should lead it into being uh, quieter as well. Round the back, what you can do now as well is you've got um, the eco mode, which basically means semi-passive. Off means the fan can spin at will, but it will still stay incredibly quiet. But a new switch that we've got around the back is you can actually turn the LEDs off around the front here. As I was unwrapping the uh, cables, you do get two individual uh, six plus two PCI Express cables, uh, but you do actually get one of them is a daisy chain. That wasn't actually uh, made very clear on the uh, paperwork for the actual unit or on the website, but that's the way they've done it. One is a daisy chain, two are individuals. So with the unit plugged in, and we are shorting it, but it does mean that we can get the unit to start. This is with the uh, eco mode turned off. So eco mode turned off means that the fan will spin all the time. This is on its lowest setting, but as it gets warmer, it can spin up. If we were to turn the eco mode on, the fan will stop and it goes into a semi-passive mode and the fan will only start when it reaches a certain thermal temperature. It's not um, based on load, it's actually based on temperature within the unit itself. And then the other switch on the back is for the lights. 
Now, I personally really like these lights, which is why I actually use uh, a version, uh, the older version in my home server. Uh, but for those of you out there that might not like the um, the light aspect on the front of it, but you actually like the white PSU, at least you do have the choice now that you can just flick it off with a flick of a switch. And it is round the back of the unit as well, so you can do it from the outside without having to take your side of your case off or anything like that. So you've got some really easy ways that you can control the power supply without having to mess around. Okay then, boys and girls, so we're gonna move on to some testing. Now, I've not turned the machine on yet, but I have got a proper Sunroon power supply load tester, so I can put specific sets of load on certain rails, certain parts of the power supply, whether it's the 3.3 volt, the 5 volt, 5 volt VSB, or the 12 volt rails, I can put specific sets of load on either side of that. I've also got um, uh, an old <laughs> gaming laptop, actually, up here with a USB oscilloscope attached so that we can um, take a look at the ripple uh, and that's the voltage fluctuation and the ripple is something that we always pay specific attention to because if the ripple is too high then you can uh, that is really what you can end up getting which can end up killing your processor or you know whatever in your board so too much ripple is a very bad thing anyway right so when this goes on it makes an awful lot of noise and I'll just try and talk above it so what I've done while it kind of kicks in it will flicker, but that's just because it's um, a, an, an LED. I can't do anything about it. I can try and change the settings on the camera, but it, if you can see the numbers, so it doesn't really matter. You'll get used to it. So I've set up a 20% load, I've set up a 50% load, and I've set up a 100% load. So if I flick everything on, so 20% load, 132.7 watt. This is a, um, and you can see it through the flicker. And this here is another um, item that we want to keep our eye on. This is our uh, efficiency setting here. So 132, half decent gaming rig, big, you know, loads of fans, big graphics card, all that sort of stuff. You're roughly going to be sort of hitting that on the desktop. If you've got a low power rig, it can go down to anything to sort of around the sort of 70, 80 mark. But this is a good kind of stop off. So at 132 load, we've got 90.3% efficiency. And if I, um, uh, what we can do is we can whiz through and we'll just focus on the efficiency for a second. So 90.3 for um, uh, 20. If we bang it up to 50, literally I can do it with the press of a button and now we're up to 300, it's actually about five watts over, it should be 325 watts. It's flicking between 91.2, sorry, 91.9 and 92. And then um, if we flick it up again, it will catch up 89.8. If we were to bring the graph up for the uh, efficiency, this, because we're testing a gold rated power supply and it's not platinum, it's not titanium, it's gonna be fairly down in the graph anyway, but the most important thing is to look at the bottom of the graph and you can see the old Superflower 650 watt gold because I did test the last one. So you can see that we've gone up a couple of notches. You can see that it is much more efficient. You've got a good 2%, uh, well, 1% there for the 50%. And then on the 100% load, you can see it's gone from 89 up to 90. So about a 1% difference across the two. But the most interesting one, well, Okay then, so moving on to the ripple, just to explain you what you're seeing here, this is the oscilloscope uh, readout here, and it's just showing us how much the um, uh, voltages basically are rippling, but up here, the top um, thing that we're seeing is how much goes below the specified voltage that we, we've asked it for. We've got this one here, which is how much it goes above, and then the actual one that we want to take uh, attention to, or you know, keep an eye on, is the uh, peak to peak, and that is where we get our, volt, the, our ripple reading from. So we're currently testing 20%, uh, which is 132.5 watts, and the most that we've seen is 6.8 millivolts of load. If you stand there and watch it for long enough, it will flick up to 6.8. We put it up to 325, the most that we saw on this was 8.4, and again, if you sit there and watch it, it will go that high up. And now we've just flicked it across and we're now testing 650 watts. And the most that we saw on this was 9.6.
And when we bring that up and actually put that into a graph, you can see it does incredibly well. It's right near the top of the graph, but you can look at the old super flower um, and the 100 watts, 100% uh, sorry, was 11 millivolts. And then the 50% um, the was about the same and the 20% was actually a tiny bit lower on that one. It actually was actually quite strong. It was down at 5.6. Uh, 100% where it's being really, really stressed is where we really want to be paying attention to it. So when you do put that into the graph and you can see it's actually up there with the, um, the big hard hitting coarse air power supplies, the RMI 1000 specifically, you can see it's put, putting in some really good competition for that. Uh, the other thing to kind of consider though is because it's a lower wattage than the RMI 1000, you would expect it to be marginally better there. If we were going to go head to head, we would really need to test 1000 watt versus 1000 watt, but obviously we would be here forever if we tested all of them. Okay then peeps. So um, I didn't actually intend on doing a full batch of testing on this when I started this today, but it was one of those ones where I've not used the power supply tester for such a long time. I felt like I wanted to have a play, even though I didn't really have time for it at this present moment in the launch of everything that's going on. But anyway, so we give it a good test. Now, if you've got the old 650 watt lead X, then to be honest with you, I wouldn't necessarily think, unless you're really, really short of space, and upgrading is something that you want to do so that you've got that little extra bit of space down around here, like I said, because this is 35 mil smaller. I wouldn't necessarily think it's an upgrade for you, do you know what I mean? It does perform marginally better, but it's not something that you're ever really gonna notice in the real world, but, it's only really, because um, Overclock will still do have the old one and they've got the new one, it's only, there's only a pound between the two. So if you're in the market for buying a new power supply, then I would absolutely say don't necessarily think, you know, it's not really enough of a saving. 15 pound, maybe not a single pound. So if you get the chance to get one of these then you can grab it, pick it up. The also the thing to think about is I did have a white one because I've obviously I'm a bit, uh, I do like my white hardware, but they do do black options as well. Also, don't forget, this is the lower end one, which was the one I picked because I knew uh, more people were gonna pick for this kind of rating. If you're wondering what sort of hardware that you can um, run on it, you can run um, a, a 1080 and a, a fully like overclocked 2011 V3 system and they don't even pull 400 watts. So this will give you a little bit of headroom there to help keep the fan down and all that sort of thing. But it's, if you're thinking about sort of like a, a KB Lake system with like a 1070 or something, this is actually the perfect sort of wattage. Um, I always end up getting loads and loads of people underneath going, what can I do with this watts and what can I do with that watts? And I, I can never keep up with the questions. So uh, if you do have any questions and you would like me to answer them, go to the OC3D forums. I won't be doing it in the comments underneath today. Um, so uh, yeah, ample wattage and uh, it's below a hundred pounds as well. Now the one thing I will say is when you do buy a power supply, don't skimp because this is the, what I would actually call the heart of your system. Your CPU is the brain, this is the heart. And if this dies, it can kill everything else in your rig. Not that I'm assuming that this is going to die, but a bad power supply can kill everything that's connected to it. And I have seen it happen. It has happened to me in the past as well. So uh, it's one of the, the areas that I, I personally say, if you're spending, um, I don't know, three, 400 pounds on your graphics card, then you should be spending about 100 pounds on your power supply minimum. Also, what you need to kind of uh, keep in mind as well is you get a good warranty on these now. They're really good efficiency. They're, they're only ever gonna be like marginal increases, or at least that's the way it's been for a little while when it comes to power supplies. It's normally about aesthetics more than anything else. Fan changes, that sort of thing's making them quieter. But you'll get a really good life out of your power supply. So it's something that's worth investing in because you never know, it may be in there uh, uh, two or three years later and you've actually already upgraded other parts. So it's always worth paying a little bit more to make sure they're quieter, that they're gonna be stable, they look that bit nicer, get better warranty, and you know that it's you've got half a chance of it lasting probably longer than some of the other parts in your system as well. But for this, we're going to give it the OC3D approved award. It 100% ROC3D approved basically means 
um, it should be in consideration. So if you're looking for a power supply and you're looking for about 650 watt, there's absolutely no reason why this shouldn't be in the running. There's a few others out there that you might wanna be thinking about from a few other brands, but to be fair, the branding thing is something that can be very kind of like personal and, you know, it, it, does it really matter too much? Well, I don't know. I would actually say that if it was me and I was looking at this power supply, the reason why I would be buying it is yes, it performs well, but I want a white power supply with some little lights on it. And that would literally be the choice for me. It's not too expensive, it looks really nice. TTL has tested it, performs really well as well. It's quiet, Bob's your mother's brother, lovely bubbly. The other thing I will say is because of the, the connectors here, they are proprietary uh, Superflower connectors. Um, OC UK, which is where I got this from and where you can buy it from, it's where all the prices come from, do sell cable upgrade kits. You can just buy the cable upgrade kits and click and replace the grey ones. I've actually got some red and white ones in um, my racing rig because I have a version of one of these in my racing rig. That's And, and I also have the 550 watt titanium in my server. So just to let you know again, when I say to you it's a good brand and it's a you know it's a good power supply i use them myself i think that should say it all but for now at least this is tiny tom logan doing a review that i hadn't planned to review today because it was a lot of work and i've wasted pretty much an entire afternoon playing with my power supply tester out Ding! <laughs>